In this video, I'm gonna give you 22 beginners perfume records. So if you're looking for a little bit of inspiration, then this is definitely a good video to watch. So these 22 accords I actually came up with based on the starter kit that I covered before. So if you didn't see, definitely go and watch the previous video. Uh, but I was trying to come up with what I thought would be the 30 best raw materials to start perfumery with. Now, when I was picking those raw materials, a big part of the criteria for me was actually what you could do with them, not just how the raw materials are on their own. So in this video, I'm now gonna actually cover those different things that you can do with it in the form of 22 Accords. Now, it doesn't mean that these are the only 22 Accords you can go and make with that set of raw materials. I'm sure there's more that I didn't think of. And of course, you can always go and make your own ones up as well. But based on my years of experience in perfumery, uh, these are all of the Accords that I thought of that you could do with the kit. So firstly then, if you're gonna go and make these accords, how do I recommend you do it? So if you've gone and got those raw materials already, firstly I'd recommend actually going to make 10% and 1% dilutions of all of those raw materials. So if you don't know how to do that, you basically get your scale, get your perfumes alcohol, and you make up a solution for each one in a new bottle, which is 10% of the raw material by mass, by weight, and then the other 90% is alcohol. So for example, that could be one gram of raw material and nine grams of alcohol. And then you can do that same process on your 10% dilution. So make another 10% dilution of that to get to your 1% dilution. Now, once you've got those dilutions, I would recommend going back through the raw materials video and actually just smelling them on their own and listening to my thoughts on the raw materials while smelling them. But when you've done that and you're ready to start these accords, uh, then here's what you've got to do. You simply take a scent strip, so one of these, and you dip it into your pre-diluted raw material, and you do that for all of the ones in the accord, and then you hold them together. So here you'd use the dilution to control the strength. So if something says it just wants a trace amount in the accord, then you would go and use your 1% dilution as opposed to your 10% for most raw materials. And also if one of the raw materials is very strong and you think it's dominating the accord, you can also try then using the 1% dilution of that to get a better idea of how it might be uh, smelling if it was just a little bit more balanced. Now I would recommend at the very end, maybe taking some of your favorites and actually trying to make those into a blend. So you simply take those raw materials and write out a very simple formula and then just try to balance them. So you pick a ratio and then depending on how it smells, you may think something's a bit too strong or weak. So you can then go into another blend where you rebalance them until you find the balance that you like. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the accords. So we're gonna start off with acacia, which is a type of flower. Now, traditionally, an acacia accord can be made using anisaldehyde and orantiol. So anisaldehyde is that kind of slightly cherry or hawthorn blossom smelling note. And then orantiol is more of the orange blossom smelling note. So traditionally, it would be these two to kind of make the core personality. But what you can also do is add a few other things optionally. So here I've said you can add hedione, floral, and rose, though just a trace of rose, because rose is quite strong. So it would make the whole thing smell like rose if you put too much in. But essentially what you're doing here is adding what's called a floralizer. So when you're making floral notes, uh, sometimes if you've got some of these notes like anisaldehyde and orantio, which give you the kind of character of the smell you're looking for, um, sometimes they don't quite project and diffuse as much as you would like, so you can use other floral notes to help provide that for you. So especially things like hedion and floral, which are quite transparent, but also rose does a really good job of just adding that little bit of boost to everything else. Even just a little trace of rose can actually really help with it. So this kind of helps your flower, let's say, sing and you know project out a little bit more. So the next one we've got is the Crojman Accord. And this one is a really famous accord in perfumery. And this one's also called the Hug Me Accord. And this one is made by Sophia Grosjman in 1990 as part of a famous perfume, Trésor by Lacombe. Now this accord is Galaxolide, Hedione, Isui Super, and Alpha Isomethyl Ionone, also called Methyl Ionone Gamma. And this accord was so popular that it's now been used in many, many more perfumes since, and you probably recognize the smell of it. Um, so this one is actually a really nice accord that you can base a perfume on just by adding a few other things to this accord. And it's definitely one that I'd recommend you try out. 
So next we have an amber accord. Now this is a really classic abstract accord from the late 1800s. And this was basically invented when synthetic vanillin was used for the first time. So vanilla used to be, and still is a very expensive ingredient, um, but one of the components of it, vanillin, which has this really strong vanilla kind of sweet vanilla smell. And that is the vanilla that most of us know today. Well, when that was made for the first time, you know, on an industrial level, and that was in the late 1800s, um, you know, perfumers were looking obviously at what kind of things you could do with this vanilla. And one of the things they found that was really nice was if you add it to labdanum absolute. So the chord of labdanum and vanillin makes this classic amber chord, which is found in loads of perfumes still to this day. So the next one is a fougere accord. Now, similarly, this one was from the late 1800s. And this one was really born properly in 1877 in a perfume called Fougère Royale by Houbignon. Now, the idea here is that, well, Fougère is the French word for fern. And while ferns do have a smell, which is quite a green smell, um, the idea was, well, let's make an abstract chord that is like, what would you imagine a fern might smell like if it had more of a smell? So the accord that was used in that perfume uh, was based on lavender, oak moss, and coumarin, though in your starter kit or in the list that I said, I put veramos as a substitute for that, which is a bit of a cleaner version, um, and it's found in high levels in the real oak moss. So you can, you, know, you can use oak moss if you want, but obviously you can also use veramos. So that is the kind of core of a fougere accord. But then optionally, you can also add bergamot and amyl salicylate because these two were really frequently also used in fougere accords uh, going forward. So the fougere accord is another accord that was very famous and it sprouted its kind of whole genre of perfumes around it. And still today, there are a lot of fougere perfumes being made. Um, but if you go and make this accord, then you'll really understand what a very old fashioned traditional fougere smells like. Okay, so the next accord is the candy floss accord. And this one comes to us from Jean-Claude Elena. And he's got a few different minimal accords that he's kindly shared with people. And one of them is the accord for candy floss. And you can make this one in that beginner's kit. So this one is vanillin plus ethyl maltol. And if you go and put them together, they surprisingly, or maybe unsurprisingly, smell like candy floss. And it's just, you know, a nice candy floss smell. So fantastic. Right, so the next one is a little bit like the fougere from before. And this one is the chypre, which is another really famous old fashioned perfume genre. And uh, the word chypre means cypress in French. And a lot of the raw materials that were used in this accord were from Cyprus. So this one, you've got patchouli, labdanum, oak moss or veramos and bergamot. So the uh, oak moss and the labdanum used to be uh, harvested a lot in Cyprus. So again, like I said, you can substitute that with veramos and it smells, you know, fairly similar. Um, so yeah, you've got this and that will be like an old fashioned chypre perfume. And that name Chypre was already coined in 1917 in the perfume Chypre de Coty, which was launched by François Coty in 1917. Now, optionally, you can also add rose. So frequently, Chypres also have things like rose or geranium inside of them. Uh, we don't have geranium in the kit, but rose also smells very similar and was also still used a lot in Chypres. So you can also go and put that in there as well. All right, so next we have a heliotrope accord. So heliotrope is another type of flower, and this one is a nice kind of sweet flower with almost like a cherry nuance to it. So at its most basic form, this accord is simply vanillin plus heliotropin. However, heliotropin is very difficult to get hold of. Uh, so instead, you can use heliotropin DEA. And then another thing that also gives a similar note and plays into this uh, heliotrope accord is anisaldehyde or even benzaldehyde if you have that as well. But you can make a basic accord like this and also you could use the veratraldehyde if you didn't have that. Remember I said in the raw materials video before if you got that instead of the heliotropin you can also use veratraldehyde instead. So you could use vanillin veratraldehyde and anisaldehyde. Um, those raw materials will give you this nice kind of heliotrope note. Again, like for the other florals, you can use something else as a floralizer to kind of boost it up, make it, you know, radiate a little bit more. So in this case, uh, you can use Orantio and Rose for that. All right, so the next accord is Mexican Vanilla. And this is an accord that I came across a few years back when doing a video 
And this accord, uh, the naming stemmed from the fact that something called coumarin was used to be uh, used a lot to adulterate vanilla flavorings, um, but this was banned in 1954 um, because of its toxicity, at least this was in America. However, Mexican vanilla flavorings, even after that point, still frequently contain coumarin. So the accord here is vanillin plus coumarin, so you can get a very similar smell to what that would have tasted like. Now, despite that um, not necessarily being safe to eat, it still smells nice, um, so you can go and use that in a perfume just fine. All right, so the next one is a carnation accord. So yeah, this one is another flower. And the thing about carnations as a flower is that this flower is uh, characterized by more of a spicy note. So you can either do this with clove oil or its main constituent called eugenol. And then often people make a bit of a carnation accord by adding something like benzyl salicylate to that. Another thing frequently used in those accords is phenyl ethyl alcohol, which is a type of alcohol uh, found in rose. So we can use rose as a source of that phenyl ethyl alcohol in order to help us stick to the materials in our kit. So if you put together eugenol, benzyl salicylate, and a little bit of rose, then you'll get a carnation smelling accord. All right, so next we've got an accord uh, based on the perfume Angel by Mugler, and this one is a gourmand accord. So this 1992 perfume had a very famous accord which had patchouli and ethyl maltol together. Now in this perfume, you'll find uh, something like toffee or caramel in the notes, as well as patchouli, and that toffee or caramel note is actually mostly ethyl maltol. So these two combine together to make this nice kind of sweet accord. And since then, this has been used in loads of other perfumes ever since. Uh, so if you go and put those two together, you'll start to get an idea uh, for this accord, which is really widespread in the whole gourmand genre of perfumes. Next then, we have Lily of the Valley. Now, like the other floral accords, we can't necessarily make a super accurate version just limited to the uh, raw materials in the kit. However, we can go and start to sketch them out. Now. In this case, we're gonna say floral plus hedione as the main accord, and that's because floral is a lily note, so it's a synthetic note with a um, classic, let's say, mouget or lily smell. And then by adding that to a bit of hedione to help kind of boost it and give it some diffusion, um, it just they just kind of go nicely together to make this kind of transparent, watery floral smell. Now on top of this, you can also add other things, for example, benzyl salicylate and orantiol, which were also in the kit. Uh, this is actually something that's recommended by Jean-Claude Elena, or at least to use benzyl salicylate and methyl anthranolate, which is very close to orantiol. Personally, I think uh, that these take it a little bit uh, out of the direction of a lily, in the sense that I find a lily quite fresh, watery and clean, whereas these two start to add uh, other notes into it. But you know, different perfumers have different uh, ways they like to do things. So I thought I would leave that there so you can try it for yourself. Now another floral is violet and this one is dominated by the ionones. And there is purposefully an ionone inside the kit and that one is alpha isomethyl ionone. So if you go and blend that with a little bit of rose and some hedione, you really take the ionone and just boost it a little bit further. Essentially that rose again acts as a quote unquote floralizer, helps just give it a little bit of uh, lift and complexity. And then the hedione also is a little bit like a petal smell, you can imagine. And it just goes and adds a bit more of a floral character. Now, violet has been a long time favorite flower in perfumery. And this is actually one of the ones that I do a deep dive into in my course that I'm currently working on. Uh, so that will be available as well too, if you're interested in you know, a really deep dive on the different ionones and other raw materials making your own violet base. And I'm actually also doing that for Lily of the Valley as well. Um, but just in the beginner's kit, you can at least get a very basic sketch of a violet. All right, so the next one is a Mellis Accord. So melis actually means honey in Latin, and this accord is one of the prominent accords in the so-called uh, oriental genre of perfumes. Uh, this term oriental is now going out of use because it's kind of uh, socially not very, uh, let's say a nice term to use. Um, but this melis accord was a common accord used in these, let's say old fashioned kind of spicy, woody, ambery types of perfumes. Uh, so examples of this are opium and youth dew. And you can make a simple accord by taking benzyl salicylate, putting it with eugenol, floral, uh, patchouli, and coumarin. So if you put those together, you'll get an idea for what a Mellis accord smells like. Now, another one of these classic uh, 
oriental genre accords is the Ambrian Accord. So this one is a little bit different. This one is bergamot, patchouli, vanillin, and coumarin. And famous perfumes using this accord include Shalimar and Calvin Klein Obsession. So going back to the old fashioned, the really old fashioned accords, and another one that you can do is lavender water. So this is a little bit similar to eau de cologne, whereas eau de cologne was a bit more of a European invention with a lot of citrus. Uh, lavender water was, let's say, the English version, and this one really centered on lavender. And the core accord of lavender water style perfumes was bergamot plus lavender, usually in a two to one ratio. So this was really popular in the 1800s, um, though of course nowadays it's a little bit outdated. Right, so another accord you can make is just a general, uh, let's say, men's aquatic cologne, something a little bit like Davidoff Cool Water. And this one you can make by using an aquatic note, so something like Helianal, and you can even add in Calone if you have that as well. Then you can add a bit of Dihydromersinol, which is this kind of fresh, watery herbal note. And then you can also add a little bit of Ambroxan, which really helps give this kind of radiant diffusion. Um, and if you go and put these three together, you usually get quite a recognizable um, 90s smelling cologne. Right, so another one you can do, and this one is also inspired by Jean-Claude Lehner's book, is a simple mango accord. Now, like all fruits, you can either go quite complex and realistic depending on, you know, if you add a lot of stuff, um, but you can also often do quick little sketches as well. And for a quick little sketch of a mango accord, you can use cassis base, alpha isomethyl ionone, and ethyl maltol. Now, in Jean-Claude Lehner's version of the accord, he uses beta ionone, which is probably a bit more appropriate, and instead of ethyl maltol, he uses aldehyde C14, which is a peach kind of lactone. Um, but I personally think ethyl maltol works quite well in the smell of mangoes and the aldehyde C18 that I put in the kit, which is more of a coconutty smell, uh, doesn't work as well as the C14 for mangoes. However, if you put these three together, you still get a very kind of nice minimalistic sketch of a mango. All right, so next we have a clean woody accord. And this one is really nice and simple. This one is just Isui Super plus Vertofix. I felt like these are the two kind of, um, let's say really universally clean usable woody notes in the kit. Um, and the Vertofix is a little bit more of, I would say, how to describe? I'd say the Isui Super is more of a kind of uh, radiant woody amber that takes up a lot of volume. Whereas the Vertofix, uh, gives you something a little bit more um, concrete to actually smell. It adds a bit more of a solid uh, part to the woody notes, so they come together quite nicely. Um, and you can make use this really in a very large quantity in your formula as a base for some kind of woody perfume that you might go and make. All right, so continuing from the theme of basic category style accords, you could also go and make a citrus accord, and you do that by simply adding together the citruses in the kit. Um, so you could use bergamot, lemon, and orange all together to make a nice citrus accord. Obviously, you'd vary the proportions depending on you know your preference. You don't have to have all three either. And then if you want to go and make it more to like a classic eau de cologne style perfume, uh, you would then think about adding things like hedione and orantiol, uh, particularly orantiol because that's an orange blossom note, whereas hedione is not a classic eau de cologne note, but it's a modern, um, like fresh note with a citrus facet, so it always blends nicely with citrus notes. All right, so next we have a tropical accord. So this one was my thought that if you put together roughly the tropical ingredients or raw materials in the kit, you get a little bit of a tropical accord. So here I've said anisaldehyde, aldehyde C18, which is a coconut, cassis base, which is the kind of like tropical fruits note, um, anisaldehyde also being the cherry note. And then I find if you add some vanilla into these, um, it just create, adds a sweetness and it kind of makes this like sweet, yummy tropical note almost a bit in a pina colada direction. Um, the only thing is if you really wanted a pina colada accord, you'd probably want to add a little bit of a pineapple note as well. Um, and obviously there wasn't room for that in the kit. Still though, these four make a fairly nice little tropical note. Right, so another one that I came up with actually ages ago when I was uh, beginning my uh, perfumery journey was that if you take a uh, well, if you take lemon and vanillin, then you put them together, you get this nice little custard accord. I've never really had a use for it so far, but I just think it's a nice one um, to try. You'll find in perfumery a lot of the times that because vanillin is used so much in food and different flavorings, usually you'll find something add vanillin 
equals some kind of food, depending on, you know, what was flavored with it. Um, so in this case, you can make custard by using lemon, just a little bit of lemon with some vanilla. And then finally, the final accord is mulled wine. So this one, um, I find you can make a nice little mulled wine accord if you use orange, eugenol, which is similar to cloves, and anisaldehyde, and rose. Anisaldehyde here is kind of, well, anisaldehyde and rose, they're both adding this kind of red fruity note to it. And rose, we're mostly using as a source of damascones, which you'd probably actually want to be using uh, if you're making this accord with more raw materials. Another thing I would add to this, if I could, is cinnamon, but again, I didn't put that in the kit. Um, but even with these four, you can get a really nice kind of mulled wine smelling accord. So that's it, 22 different accords you can make with the 30 raw material starter kit, which honestly, I don't think is too bad. Uh, making 22 different accords just out of 30 base smells, I think that's really pretty cool actually. And that is just why I designed the kit the way that I did in order for us to be able to go and do all of this. Now, currently I am working on a complete module on accords and bases, how to build your own and all that kind of stuff as part of the online course. I'm also gonna have a lot of examples, especially of different floral and fruity accords for how you can go and build those. However, um, I really wanted to make this video so that, you know, as a beginner, now you've got your raw materials, what can you actually go and do with them? So I'm hoping now that after you've watched this, uh, you can go and take the ideas away from this video put them together and actually enjoy these combinations firstly for yourself um, and then also maybe develop some of these ideas and go and use those as part of your own perfumes. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time with another one.